all your help in facilitating this conversation this afternoon. There are a few things going on. First of all, we're going to ask everybody to mute their mic. Um, John, John Nur can do it for us, um, but if everybody's responsible and keeps their mics, that would be wonderful. Um, there is a chat feature that you can see on the bottom of the screen. Um, please use that chat um, to post questions or ask to be unmuted so you can speak. And Julia Pernick and I will be monitoring that chat so we won't let it go unnoticed, I promise you. Um, the other thing I can say, two things, two housekeeping things. One, this is being recorded, so we can share it with folks afterwards. And also, um, Lindsay has said the slides will be available after this presentation. And also any resources that come up within the chat or in conversations or questions, we will happily share this with the group um, after this presentation is over. So, so don't think you're gonna miss anything. Um, we're gonna take questions and comments and contributions after the slide, the PowerPoint presentation. So please put them in the chat or be ready to put them in the chat when the PowerPoint is done. Um, we really value everybody's contributions. This is certainly uncharted water for all of us. And we know we have a great brain trust out there and we rely on all your contributions. So this might be a little wonky with a group of this size, but we're, we're thrilled that we're all here. And if I look down at the bottom of my screen, it says we have 176 participants. So with that, I'm gonna mute my mic and I will turn it over to Ashley and Lindsay. No pressure at all. No, I'm kidding. This is Ashley Stewart, the director of the Caseyville Library. And like they said, all of these slides will be available. So there's a lot in them and there's a ton of hyperlinks embedded into the slides. So please don't feel like you have to write everything down quickly. You'll, you'll definitely get a copy of all of these at the end. So that way you can explore the links and do some more research after the fact. So I'll let inter Lindsay introduce herself. Hi, I'm Lindsay Heron. Um, I'm director of Wood River Public Library. Um, I did start off as youth services prior to being director, so I have some experience in doing summer reading. Plus, um, I'm a bit of a control freak, so I haven't handed <laughs> over all of the programming to my program coordinator, who might be on here. She's got small children like I do, so who knows what's happening at her house. Um, you all are lucky I was muted. My son was just screaming bloody murder before <laughs> Ellen opened this all up, so you're welcome for that one. Um, Ashley is showing you how to contact us. At the end of this, um, if you get into planning, replanning your summer reading program, please do not hesitate to reach out to either of us. I am by no means an expert, but I will do my best to help you get ready for summer reading because we do think it's important. Um, so we're gonna go over a couple things. Um, I did go to the Beanstack. I don't know how many of you um, were part of their town hall last week, um, but that's where a lot of this information came from, but I felt that it was completely applicable to those who might not use Beanstack. Um, so we're going to go over things to consider, um, operations, marketing, iReads take on summer reading post COVID-19, or maybe even still amidst it, we don't know, um, some programming ideas, and then resources. Um, and again, this is not by any means the end all be all, it's just what Ashley and I um, have found to be really helpful um, this last week. So things to consider. Um, if you don't already include your adults, um, I would strongly encourage you to, to do so. I think that following this time, people are gonna be looking for things to do. Um, and it doesn't have to be something super complex. Um, Woodriver has done adults as long as I've been there. Um, you wanna try and keep your goals similar. This is gonna keep your headaches from being too large. Um, so I can, and I'm gonna refer to what we're doing because I of course have already started replanning. Um, you want to keep your goals similar. So for us, um, instead of some people reading books, some people reading minutes, some people reading pages, everybody is going to read books. You're going to log your books. You might have a different goal on how many books to read this summer, but that's what we're doing. Um, we use Beanstack. Um, our goal is also to get 10 badges. So everybody, no matter your age, is to earn 10 badges. This is to help you when you're communicating, because let's just say, God forbid, we are not open physically to our patrons. You're gonna be doing a lot of things in the written word. And so being able to streamline it is gonna keep people's attention. They're gonna know their goals. Um, and that's really important right now with the potential of not seeing them face to face. Um, you might wanna consider changing your start date. So um, 
Beanstack is not a free resource. Um, it does cost annually. Um, if you want a free resource, we're going to get to that. Google Forms would be a good one um, that puts everything into like an Excel sheet for you. Um, so we're changing our start date in Wood River because I'm worried that I personally don't think Illinois schools are going back. So we're going to actually bump ours up to start um, in May. So that way people have something to do. Um, I would not start in July because the I really think that people are just going to be at that point kind of over everything. So you might want to just consider changing um, where, when you start things. Um, I know that a lot of us have the mentality of, but that's how we've always done it. I would not stick to that this summer. Um, participation. It can be anything that you want it to be. So in our slide, we've got reading. You can have writing. Writing reviews is great because you can also use them that, to then market your books later and get people to circulate them. Uh, musical instruments. It's crafts, volunteering. Um, you can log, you can read, log your reading, log your pages, um, have weekly challenges, um, themed activities to whatever theme you've chosen. Um, I read has the theme dig deeper. Um, we've chosen a previous I read theme of reading is so delicious. Well, mostly because I wanted to do a lot with food, which <laughs> if we're not meeting in person might not happen. Um, and you can do a badge system. If you have a button maker, I love this idea. Um, they can actually get a physical hand, you know, in their hands badge. And again, this is going to totally play out whether or not, um, our doors are open to our people. Um, as we mentioned before, Google forms is a free resource. Um, you can have links on your Facebook, on your website. Um, Facebook groups are huge. We have actually a book club on our Facebook right now. That's been really popular and it's not necessarily one specific book, just a place for people to chat. So, um, Prizes were a big conversation at this um, town hall that I went to. So some of the options for prizes, um, I'm going to go out of order. Um, electronic gift cards or coupons is a big one. My aunt who lives in Virginia actually sent me a Target gift card through my email. So that's a really easy one. Um, you can do porch drop off if you live in a smaller location. So Wood River is not very big. Dropping off somebody's prizes wouldn't be very hard. Um, put it Snail mail is an easy one. You can schedule a pickup if you're not open. So tell somebody they need to be there at a certain time and, you know, do some sort of non-contact um, swap. Um, or you can also have people just hold off until the doors reopen. Um, it kind of just depends on what you want to do. I think there are lots of options. Um, something that's not mentioned in here too would be um, partnering with your, whoever's doing lunches, your, your meal programs. We have twigs. Right now the school system is handing out meals. So um, you could leave it there um, so that it's a location that's already interacting with people. Could be another option. Um, another one that I think, I think try, um, that Troy used to do, um, you can have them actually choose to pay it forward to a charity. Um, now the caveat is it cannot be your library. You're going to have to pick like a friend's group um, or Ashley had been suggested finding a business that would donate for you. Um, but maybe for every 10 books a person reads, they can donate a dollar towards a charity um, or a group that might need it. Um, and I another example of this that I heard is a library did like, say the community wanted an outside sitting area. So that summer, everybody that was participating in the summer reading program all had the same goal in mind of, okay, at the end of the summer, maybe we'll have an outside sitting area that people can come and read at. So that's another example too, is you can use it towards your own building if there's something. Um, one library put it use towards like Lego tables or things like that. So even if it's something internally that you want at your library, it's just that paying it forward, everybody working for the same goal kind of mentality. Uh, yeah, community, um, something that involves the entire community is great. Ashley, if you want to speak on this one, because I think this one was a lot of your stuff. Okay. <laughs> so um, another thing to consider is um, just being inclusive. So any kind of extra, extra resources and planning that you can include with your summer reading program to make it inclusive. Um, librarians, I feel like we know our community the best. So the families that we serve, the people that are in our communities that are going to participate in our summer reading programs. So these are some of the ones that um, we came up with. And again, anything blue and underlined is hyperlinked. And so when you get these, uh, but there's anything from translation and interpretation to visual impairments, just consider if there's kids or adults that might be visually impaired, you can increase your font size, change your color contrast, make sure they're bright. 
Um, there's links for how to make storyboards and social stories, visual schedules, um, screen readers. So there's desktops and apps, closed captioning. And then also keep in mind, if you do have a community that has different families, um, different languages that are present in your community, then closed captioning, not only in English, but also closed captioning possibly in Spanish, or um, like I said, whatever you have in your community. And then this is an example. So a lot of our pictures are hyperlinked to um, all the examples that we gave are libraries that are giving permission to show them as an example. But this library does um, a story time that has a storyboard so that kids can follow along and it's in Spanish. So that way it just kind of takes your programming to another step. Um, so we talked about some of the web-based platforms. Um, Bookpoints, Beanstack, Wandu, Read Squared are all currently working with um, I read. So all of the graphics and stuff are already in there. Google Forms was another one I mentioned. That one's free. Um, Wood River used it a couple years ago when we were challenging our community to read um, a grand total of books. So they, I had it on our Facebook and our website and people could just fill it out. Um, we're doing, we're going to try something similar we're using Beanstack because it's not two places to log things. Um, but it would be another way to do things virtually if, um, if your doors aren't physically open, or, or if you just want to try some sort of virtual um, digital kind of logging system. And again, Google Forms is a link to just as like there's a tips and tricks for Google Forms. Um, I know. So one of the big things was how do you handle people who don't have internet. Um, so the very first one are some things that you can do within your facility um, if you don't have internet. So drive-in movies are super fun. I've seen people, you know, decorate a box and kids can sit in there. You can even do them, um, you have to get a license to do them outside. Um, and I think it's a little bit pricier than if you do your, in, like if you're showing a movie inside. Um, but you can decorate cars and stuff and show them outside in the park. Um, speakers are always, you know, those require no internet. Um, and performers or concerts. Um, but I mentioned earlier, partnering with your meal programs. Um, you can leave your flyers there. You could leave your reading logs, um, your weekly challenges, because um, that's a place that people are already going to. They're already gonna be picking something up. Um, so why not just kind of piggyback off of that location? Um, if, again, I'm really hoping our doors are open, but God forbid they aren't. You could even post a weekly challenge on your door um, for people to walk by, drive up, see what it is, um, and then go and try and take care of it that week. Um, Advertise using yard signs and banners, and we're going to talk a little bit more about marketing later, but um, these are two ways that, um, again, Woodruff is smaller, so we do have a couple locations in our community that people will post banners, um, like for the Fireman's Fish Fry or our um, Town Ice Cream Social, um, and I'm going to try and utilize that this year for people, because we aren't having face-to-face -face time like we're used to, um, to try and get more um, more participation. Yard signs are another one. Um, and yeah, they cost some money, but if you can make them generic in some way, then you can reuse them from year to year. Get your staff, get your board members, see if you can get city officials to maybe put them in their yards, business owners, because um, it's a, people are driving around and walking around right now still too, um, myself included. I walk every morning. Um, if you are open and let's say we, you know, the governor still says you can't have groups of people together, um, doing craft kits that you can leave at your front desk. So that's kind of more of like a passive idea, but you can change them weekly. You can still do a theme. Um, you could put book recommendations out for each week's theme, just like you would during your programs. Um, and then let's not uh, knock the whole pen and paper reading log. That's also something that a lot of people are still using. You can even hang a small mailbox. They, may, they sell locking ones. If you can attach it to the outside of your building, people can drop their logs in there when you're still locked up um, so that you can see and you know, get, get those numbers, get those statistics. Um, so I tried to mark ones you're particularly good um, if your building is not open. So. All right, so moving on to operations. Um, a big thing is take the time to train your staff, especially if this is gonna be a new thing for you and your community. Um, make sure your staff is well-versed. Um, pick a couple people, uh, one or two, maybe three, that are gonna handle those questions that might come in via email. Um, people who work well under pressure um, and aren't gonna be upset when um, somebody might, if, let's say that someone asks you a question and you respond and it's not necessarily the clearest. That person might come back and be real heated because you didn't help them and you didn't do your job and now I don't know what to do. You need to find the people who are going to be able to operate well under that pressure and not um, fly off the handle and give back another snarky response. Um, 
have simplified written oral instructions. Um, make sure that they are available in a multitude of ways. Um, Facebook, um, post them on your door again, on your website, um, get them into newsletters, um, coordinate with other existing programs as well. So try and use your schools. Um, they're there for you. I'm sure you partner with them already. Um, so don't let those partnerships fall by the wayside just because you're not in your building right now. Um, Use your newspaper, printing, copying, mailing packets. Um, let everybody know that way as well. Those are tried and true. Um, and while a lot of us are, you know, we're doing a lot of things digitally, clearly, as we're in a Zoom meeting, um, not everybody is as lucky as we are. Um, come up with some standard responses that can be modified. This will make your life a lot easier. Um, create support hours that are built into your schedule. Um, and they might have to extend past your normal work day, um, especially right now. I, you know, I'm pretty much done by five o'clock a lot of days, but I'm making sure I'm available a little bit later for my patrons if they need, especially via social media. Um, set up those auto responses. If you don't have those already on your social media, they're great. Um, so mine set up that at five o'clock, it pretty much tells people like, hey, these are our hours. Someone will get back to you as soon as possible. But during the day, it just says, we'll, re you know, we'll respond soon. Um, we never want people to feel like they're not being heard. <clears throat> Um, the other thing with your auto response is that you want to set up an expectation. Um, so things like someone will respond in the next 24 hours. Chances are you're not going to take 24 hours. And so if it takes less, then that's a nice surprise for the people um, that you're responding to. But if it does, you've already set that expectation up. Um, and I will completely tell you right now that I have been Amazon shopping because what else am I doing? Um, and all of my packages have arrived early. And that's been a really great surprise. And it's kind of the same system of they're telling me my package will be here Friday, but it showed up Wednesday. So if you tell someone 24 to 48 hours and you're responding in six, that's going to, it's a great PR move. It's a great, um, it's great customer service. Um, you're going to want to monitor your social media. You're going to double down on social media when it comes to um, virtual summer reading. Um, oh, I like your ask a librarian button. Can you how, is that a, that's on your website, right, Ashley? It is. Yeah, it's something that we added to our platform. And that's if your website platform allows it. But it's something just like a messenger feature that we added to our homepage. So just ask a librarian. And same thing, it has an auto response connected to it. So it's like, we'll get we'll get back to you as soon as that as soon as we can. So um, create an FAQ, you want to try and provide as much information for your patrons and your participants up front so that they can answer their own questions. Um, not everybody will, we know this, but if we can at least attempt to, um, and it also helps your staff. Um, if they have access to that FAQ, then they're gonna be able to more quickly respond to patron needs. Um, and one of the suggestions from the Beanstack um, Town Hall was to establish a ticket system. So they use Zendesk, which um, Ashley has a link down there. Um, and that allows you to keep things clear and being able to, you don't want anything to fall, fall through the cracks during this time. I would hope you wouldn't have that many questions, but you larger libraries, you, you, pro you might have to field right. more questions, so. Okay, so marketing. Um, talk about yard signs, um, banners within buildings or intersections, um, finding places. Also, you can use your bank's LED signs. Um, our, our banks here really, or even schools, if they have one, see if they'll advertise for your summer reading program on there. Um, direct mailers are great. Um, an example of one too that could work is your water bill. Um, if you can get on the water bill, that's already going out and that's free. You don't have to pay for anything. Um, newspapers, you can pay for an advertisement, but press releases, or you can add things to their events. Um, we do that for our programming here and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, make sure that your email lists are up to date. Um, you can use MailChimp to send out mass emails. So when we decided to close, um, earlier in March, we, I tried emailing everybody. I pulled the Simply Reports, um, got everybody's emails. I don't know why I tried to email 2,000 people at one time. It doesn't work. But when I tried 50, that didn't work either. So you can use MailChimp to send out mass emails um, to be able to advertise to all your current patrons um, what's going on. It might also work for your newsletters. That's not a bad idea. Um, Ask people to forward on um, emails. Do it on Facebook as well. Ask people to share them, tag people in them. Um, sponsors, ask your, um, if you normally have, um, like there's a restaurant in town that always partners with us, ask them to post on their social media about your summer reading. Ask the schools to share it as well. Schools are a great resource. Um, and they have some, sometimes these businesses and uh, partners have different followers from you. So this is a great way to reach those extra people. Also, if you have a, um, 
we have like a Wood River neighbors group and all the like buy sell trades or like the yard sale sites. If you can get into those and share, it's another great, you know, avenue to reach more people in your community. Um, and if they advertise for you, because you, at least for me, my expenses are going to be a lot lower this year because we aren't having to pay for materials for programs. Um, so I don't need as many sponsors, but if I can get people to advertise for me, I can count them as a sponsor or as a supporter and put them on my Beanstack account from my website um, and give them a shout out on my own social media. <clears throat> um, don't be afraid to post more often. Um, try and use other platforms like YouTube, TikTok, or Snapchat. I'm not about to try a TikTok, but if you do, I want to see it. I think it'd be great. Um, lots of online tools that make your marketing look really good. I know a lot of people use Canva. Um, I've not used Animoto. Have you used that one, Ashley? I have not yet. Um, so that one looks like videos and slideshows. Um, so something else to try. Um, remember that pictures and videos tend to do better on your social media, um, which obviously Instagram is nothing but pictures, but Facebook, um, links and pictures and videos to tend to pop up in people's timelines a lot better than just straight text. Um, again, try and utilize other pages. See if other city departments and community groups will share for you. Uh, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to tell you no. So might as well shoot it, shoot for it and try it, see what happens. Share it and tag. So if like, if you team up with somebody else in the community and just tag, just make sure to constantly use hashtags and tagging each other. Uh, all right, so Ashley and I are both on the iRead committee, and we did meet, I don't know what day anymore, last Friday. I don't know maybe. either. So, I don't know. What day is today? I don't even know. No, I think, it was, was it last week, week before? I think, Diane's saying yes, so yes, okay. it was last Friday. Um, <laughs> so Ashley does have a link for the new, latest iRead newsletter that went out. Um, there is now, we are offering a, an abridged version of the resource guide um, for free. So that way you can provide more for your community and so parents that are at home have something to do. Um, there are some order delays right now, so just be aware if you haven't ordered yet or if you have and you're still waiting. Um, that's just something to be aware of. Uh, we talked about web-based web platforms, which was in a previous slide. Um, there is talk of virtual performer showcase. I think there's a link on the next page. Um, Library of Congress and Dave Pilkey at home uh, was discussed and then child nutrition, which is also a slide coming up. <clears throat> So here's the link to the resource guide home edition. Um, it's less than what you would get if you had had a paid version. Um, so if you are still looking for it, here you go. And this is open to families as well. So you, do, you don't have to be a library staff to go out to the link and look at the resource guide. It's open to anybody who wants to utilize all the activities that are in there. Um, here are three different um, options if you do summer meals at the library. Um, you've got USDA, No Kid Hungry, and Feeding America. So these are some options if you want to get into that or if you currently do and are looking for, for some more information. And that's one other thing to keep in mind is, I think it was on NPR that I was listening, but I heard some of these summer or lunch programs that the schools are offering are starting to run out or they're starting to get low. So that's another thing to keep in mind is maybe it, it would be beneficial to start your summer program early, maybe get hooked up with one of these programs if that is a need in your community and the schools are starting to get low with their food. So performers have been another big conversation. Um, what do you do, right? If you can't have 50 people in the room, um, do you really go through with, with paying for a performer? They're not, they're not a cheap part of your program. Um, so you've got a couple options. You can cancel. I think that's the most obvious one. Um, and maybe it's not the most obvious, which would be great. Um, you can postpone or promise to reschedule them in the fall when things have kind of slowed down. Um, a lot of people, I know Animal Tales just sent me an email that they're going to be looking at virtual, either like Zoom or Google Hangout um, options for their shows at a... Um, I don't say a discounted rate, but it's not the same as if they were there in person. Um, and there is a link, um, an iRead committee member has come up with um, kind of a database for mostly Illinois performers. They're not all, um, iRead does not endorse any of these. This is simply a collection of them. Um, and if there's somebody else that you want to add, um, I believe that there's an email on there. Um, so if you're looking for other people, and there are some that are outside of Illinois. So if you're looking at doing something online, it might be interesting to see if you can find someone who's not um, who you normally have because it's going to be virtual. Um, 
I know you can do things Facebook Live, you can do them via Zoom. And if you do them Facebook Live, you don't have to save them to be viewed later. So that's something to keep in mind, um, especially if you do like a Facebook Live and you're really embarrassed by it. Like I do We Jam and I dance, it's super embarrassing. Um, but people like it. And so if you want to, you could choose to not save it. So the performer wouldn't have to worry about their performance being out there on the internet for free for all time. And then what I put is the performer's Facebook pages. I think there was a juggler that I just saw recently, a local juggler that was putting- Juggling out. Jeff! Yes. So he was on, he posted his on his social media. And then the article that I put is it's a good read from a performer's perspective. So they also talk about this is our livelihood. This is how we get paid. So please consider that like we're more than happy to do live. We're more than happy to accommodate. Um, just think of them as well when you go to try to determine how to do your summer reading program. Oh, I, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'll keep talking. So, I never shut um, up. <laughs> So here's presenters. And so um, don't just think about the performers like the magicians and the music, you know, musicians, magicians, all of those. But um, think of your other community contacts that you have. So a lot of them are doing these amazing live streams and recorded videos. And so I just put some examples on here. And again, all of them are hyperlinks. So if you just click on the um, image after, once you receive these slides, you can see all of them. But St. Clair County Historical Society does a great job about tagging all of the local libraries whenever they post anything about historical news going on. You have, um, I love the Fridays with a park ranger. So there's different parks and trails that will do um, activities and we'll, you know, share those on their pages. STL Zoom, I thought that was cute. Um, next week they're doing Learn ASL. Um, the St. Louis Aquarium has their, um, I love when they feed the otters breakfast. I always watch that one. So, um, but just, if you just pay attention to all of these local pages, um, Illinois Department of Natural Resources always post updates. So just think of all of your free resources that are available as well and just keeping them informed and, or another option for your families. And then youth programming. So different types of youth programs, scavenger hunts, activity sheets. So that could be bingos, passports. Um, whatever you want them to do to um, continue participating throughout the summer. Craft bags and kits we've touched on, um, virtual story times, and then story time kits. And um, this link up here, the virtual story time kits, she does one, I think, every weekday. But it's a story time and then a craft involved and then another activity, and it's all themed around the same thing. So with us smaller libraries, if you have people already out there in the library world putting all of this effort in, there's no reason for us to have to, you know, reinvent the wheel and try to copy everything and do all that extra work. So if there's already amazing content out there, feel free to share and use that. Um, the Cooper Siegel Library did a super cute library tour video, which, um, it, the library is closed to the public now, it's quiet, but this was a way that they were like, come on in, we'll show you a tour. But um, at each like workspace was a puppet, it's like being mischievous. So I think Kermit the Frog was at the circulation desk and he knocked over the scanner. But um, it was just a really cute like virtual or like library tour, just kind of going through everything. So that's another option. Then we have the amazing world of virtual escape rooms, virtual field trips, and nature cams. Um, this Amanda McKee Jones has so many field trips on her page, and then she also um, has a whole list of escape rooms that are available. Teachers Pay Teachers is another great resource where some of them you do have to pay for, but they already have the templates made for you if it's an escape room that you wanna include in your summer reading program. And then some of the other ones are also just links just showing you lists of different virtual field trips that are available. And then nature cams are also really fantastic. Um, that one specifically goes to goexplore.org, I believe. Um, and when it comes to virtual field trips too, you can partner with like your PD and your fire department. Cause I know Chatham had, they, they did one, I think they did a series of them with their fire department. Um, so you can see if maybe people in your community can give a tour, um, maybe may have your mayor do a tour of the city hall or something, um, things that are relatable to your community. 
So these, again, all clickable, but these are different libraries, examples of what they've been trying to do. So Williamsburg will do a dance party. So you can see they have a designated time where they do dance parties. Um, and then Randolph did a scavenger hunt. So they went around town and they did a scavenger hunt, trying to get people to be out in the community and mobile and moving. And then same with the last one. Um, this one is a um, online story kit as well. And that one includes singing and dancing and moving. Another app, a um, couple ideas that I found is <laughs> getting stuffed animals to do things in the library. So not just having yoga and tummy time, but using a teddy bear while they do it. And then um, another fun idea is a chalk the walk um, challenge or some kind of sidewalk chalk challenge where you can either do it at their homes and their communities, they can come in front of the library at different times or use this, you know, social distancing in mind, but um, people coming together to do different sidewalk chalk. Another resource to use because it's there and it's available is um, all these authors, writers, and illustrators that are already doing lives for you and um, really just trying to keep kids involved and I think it's fantastic. You can follow them um, on Facebook so I get notifications for a handful of them so that way it just keeps me up to date and every once in a while I'll just click on and watch them myself. So um, Mo has teamed up with the Kennedy Center and he does lunchtime doodles and then um, Dave Pilkey has teamed up with the Library of Congress and he does story times and I believe doodles as well. And then Jason Reynolds, this is kind of more for young adults. And so I believe he's gonna write as well, reading and writing. Um, and so here's the article, this link down here is an article for different, it's a huge list of all these different um, authors that are already planning on doing it. And just be careful if you want to do virtual story times to make sure that they are ones that have given that permission so that way you don't have to worry about any copyright issues. Another um, clever idea that I just thought of that I've seen, um, shout out to Maryville uh, Library because I saw that they're having kids in the community read stories on Facebook as a video and then they share them to the library page. So it gets the kids that you are used to seeing their reading and providing these live story times as well. Podcasts, there's all kinds of podcasts. And again, just make sure um, it's one thing to think of with your summer reading program. If you feel like them listening to podcasts and audiobooks, that that's a way of participating and that they would get credit for that. But there's all different kinds of podcasts that are good for family and kids. And these are all different links to different articles at the bottom too. But the ones that you see are ones that I saw referenced frequently. So then we go into adult programming. So, um, I keep seeing seeds and gardening because now it's such an important time, one, to make health a priority in your life and to really make sure that you're strong and emotionally and mentally and physically. So uh, there's libraries, Carrie, I believe is in Illinois and they're doing a seed library gardening, all of these actually. And then in Kentucky, it's doing the seed pickup as well. And then the last one I thought was fun was a Ask a Farmer Q&A podcast. So that library is starting a podcast about um, Q&As for farmers. Other examples are virtual coffee talks. So you could do inviting a local author to come and be part of the talk, local government officials, you could have um, really anybody, local charities, um, nonprofit organizations, anybody that um, would be interested, you could host virtual coffee talks for teens and adults. The one in the middle is they're doing, um, it's called silver streaming, but they're doing like fitness on Tuesdays and knowledge on Thursdays. So the ones that they had this week was chair yoga and a Zoom tutorial. And then shout out to Mississippi, or uh, Six Mile because they did, um, what is that, throwback, it was a craft night and I saw um, Mississippi Valley just do this too. So they both just like had videos of doing different crafts and having people watch and follow along if they have the materials. So then we have free apps. Another thing that, that you can incorporate with your summer reading program is possibly utilizing all the 
amazing free apps that are available. So Lindsay and I went through and we just kind of broke down the main three areas. So you have learning, which is, you know, math, reading, science, all of that. And she did a great job of putting age ranges on there. And then fitness as well, obviously another big thing right now. So um, use the time that we have right now. That's what I keep telling myself. And so um, all these great fitness apps. And then if you do want to continue incorporating outdoor, getting outside, because I know a lot of us are just so tired of being cooped up, but um, here's a different list of all these outdoor activities that you could go on, hiking, geocaching, astronomy, gardening, plants, you name it. And then if you don't feel inspired even after all of that and you need some more inspiration, um, I always follow um, the Association for Library Service to Children and YALSA. Those are great resources that have numerous um, ideas for programming. And then social media pages that I follow a lot, obviously iRead. Uh, iRead has a Facebook page and they also have a Pinterest page. Um, let's see, Library Think Tank, Let's Move in Libraries, Libraries Step Up in Times of Crisis. Storytime Underground and Programming Librarians Interest Group. So those are the my go-to. There's also one, if you currently use Beanstack, there's a Beanstack user oh, yes. group as well. Um, yes. There's probably ones for the other platforms. Um, I just, that's not what I use, so I don't know off to, offhand. <clears throat> and then podcasts for librarians. So these are a handful of my favorite, and um, there's a, some links there to different articles of other ones. But uh, it's always nice to hear what other people are doing and um, yeah, book reviews, anything like that. And then additional resources is um, the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. If you're interested, it's, a, it's free to sign up and be a member and I highly recommend it. It's different ways to do health related programming in your libraries and they have a lot of they have um, book club kits and different things that you can get from them as well. Exhibits that you can um, apply for. Libraries and Autism is a wonderful resource that's full of ideas, not only for programming, but also how you can make your library more inclusive. Digital Marketing Tactics. This was an article written by Zubin um, and Beanstack. They're the same. Um, that is, um, they are doing trainings and articles and all different things. And again, Lindsay and I can just speak to them just because that's the one that we both use. And then also TechSoup, before you buy any software, any programming, um, technical needs that you might have, just look at TechSoup first because they have a whole bunch of different discounts, Zoom package being one of them, but there was, oh my goodness, Facebook Marketplace, there was all different kinds of um, Asana. I've never used Asana, but they have a whole bunch of different programs for nonprofits. So before you purchase anything, check with them first. So that way you can definitely get a discount if it's available. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys put an amazing program together in, in the blink of an eye. I am so <laughs> impressed. Thank you. <laughs> way. I cannot thank you enough for doing <laughs> um, How about questions? Yes. I'll look at them in the chat and then maybe we can unmute microphones if we need to. If anybody has questions about, um, you know, how they're going to move forward in, in this environment or follow up on um, any of the resources. I know that's a lot of information. If you it come is. up with questions, <laughs> you can totally email us. That's why we put them in there. Um, and yes, slides will definitely be available with the links. So that way you guys have more than enough time to go through everything on your own. Ellen, where are I you think, putting the slides? Yeah, I think probably what we'll do with the slides is um, send them out to everybody. We can do that through messaging in L2. And then we can also um, put them on our website probably, um, I don't know, we'll talk to our marketing about the best way to do that. Or Julia, if you're in, if you have an idea of where, yes, you can put them on the iRe website, I think, Diane, right guys? I don't care. 
Yeah. <laughs> we might either put them directly on our website at IHLS or put them within the COVID-19 section. Anybody was asking about um, your virtual, um, virtual performers and keeping them for just your people. Um, I know I, for me personally, my performers, uh, they're open to anybody. So that to me wouldn't necessarily be a huge concern. Um, I guess that'd be a question more that you would have to ask the performer what their thoughts are on it being available more broad. Um, but Zoom or Google Hangouts might be an option um, where you can have them register and you can email them a link so that you can control who is in that space. I think it's hard to because we don't exactly know where we're going to be in two or three months. Maybe at that point, the performer could still come to the library or presenter and it's basically like a Q&A with them. And then you could do a live in your library with just them. Maybe at that point, it'll be, you know, 10 people or less. So you could do RSVP version and let so many people come in at a time. It's really up in the air, but I think just allowing yourself to be flexible and know that okay, yes, we'll book them now virtually. And then if, you know, we're able to go back to work and slowly ease into it again, then you could do an RSVP basis with, you know, the first 10 people that RSVP, or like I said, you can just do them and the performer yourself and them and then stream it that way. It's whatever works at that time, really. I also, I, I want to encourage people to not get stuck in a mindset of, well, this is how we've always done it. We always start June 1st. We have to start June 1st because that's, unfortunately, that's not really an option right now. So kind of like Ashley said, be flexible and kind of take, you're going to start from scratch and just take it all away. And I know personally, I hate to say it, but we might not have performers. And that's something that is a tried and true. We do it every year, but we also partner with our day camp. And I've talked with Parks and Rec. They're probably not having a day camp because they advertise the school's a month ago and they haven't been able to do that. So I think that those are things that you just, it might look different this year and it might look different moving forward um, as we keep these thoughts and these concerns about spreading germs in general in our, in the forefront of our mind. So I just, I want to encourage everyone to kind of um, just don't get stuck in that mindset. That that's how we always do it because if you have to change it, you have to change it. Um, but you also, there is an option. I've also seen a lot of people, um, uh, I, I monitor our iRead um, Facebook account. And there's a lot of people just questioning canceling completely. And I want to encourage you to not do that either. I think summer reading is really important. It's going to be even more important this year following um, a lack of structured schooling for so long. So I want to, there are ways. I know that there is a way that you could have something summer reading at your library. So um, we just have to kind of work through it. And I'm more than happy to help you find what works for your library. So um Another idea I just thought of for kiddos that don't have in internet is um, see if there's any local radio stations that would allow you to come in and do like an evening story time or Love that. something like that. Trying to, you know, radio, TV, actually, and I have seen some people do um, like their local networks will let them come in and do a story time as well. So, well, and I know internet's a huge thing, but I think that um, sometimes the number of people who have smartphones um, is underestimated. Um, and free Wi-Fi. McDonald's still has free Wi-Fi and you can still sit out on their little seats outside and access it. Um, our Wi-Fi is still on. So I think that there are options to still, if you want to put it on your website or whatever, I think that there's still an option to access things, even if they don't have internet at home. Um, so keep those things in mind as well. Um, I know our local chamber is in the process of putting together a list of all the available free Wi-Fis in town. So I'm hopeful that if everybody can start to do that, um, at least you can advertise that with the summer reading program too, is just have a list of, list of Wi-Fi options available in your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, extend other, your Wi-Fi too. That's a yeah. good idea. Any other Somebody questions? Somebody asked where, we, okay. where we're going to post this, and we will post it on ILA's page, on our social media, on, our, on the IHLS Facebook page. We will post it um, on our COVID-19 and also put it on the main part of our, our website for a, for a period of time. So it, it will be easily accessible. Somebody asked about summer volunteers. If um, I think it, it was Patrick from Carbondale 
who asked about using volunteers during summer reading programs. Anybody have thoughts about that this particular summer? Alan, if I can address that, I've always done junior librarians. This is Susan McKinney at the St. Joseph Township Library. Oh, great. I just left it. Please, Susan, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't know if I was unmuted or not. Um, we've always done a program here called Junior Librarians, the five weeks of the summer reading program where kids 10 to 15 can volunteer an hour a week. And I usually do my orientations in April because I sit down with parents and guardians to go over rules and requirements and stuff like that. And I actually had to cancel it this summer. One, I just didn't have time to do the orientation to get their t-shirts bought in time, not knowing whether we'd even be open or not. And two, I just don't want to run the risk of increased contamination if we are still closed at that point. So mm -hmm. I did cancel it this summer, but I will redo it again next summer if we can. So we utilize volunteers quite a bit um, at Wood River and with the plan being, so our plan is to do everything um, online um, on Beanstack with we, um, my program coordinator and I, I think she's on here. Um, we have four or five options kind of that are ready that we can throw together um, and, you know, advertise for two weeks to be able to do in-person things if that comes to be an option um, using like Oriental trading or um, Amazon shopping. Um, so that way we have those, those normal, regular things we do, um, but we don't necessarily, we're not actively planning to do them at the moment. Um, and that being said, without planning on having people in the building, our need for volunteers is much smaller. Um, we will definitely be utilizing them probably in other ways, like um, we have a garden, so maybe pulling the weeds or windexing windows, whatever it might be. Um, but in terms of actually summer reading related, it's looking like a big fat no. <laughs> Sorry, in blunt terms. We have a question about where the recording will be posted on L2, or where will the recording of this meeting be posted? And we will let you know um, when we have that. L2 would be a logical place. It might go up on our website as well, just embedded in it with the information about the slides. Um, so referencing somebody who said they're not doing reading logs. Um, so that's an option if you wanna do things like, if you're doing it on Facebook or Google, do it all virtual. Um, but I would like to say that from what I've read that this, um, the coronavirus doesn't necessarily last long on paper. Um, so I don't know. And by the time that we open things back up, I mean, you're gonna have books anyway, so you might as well still do a reading log, kind of my thought. But um, you could definitely have people like tag you in their social media if they're doing like a video of them. Like if you challenge them to do a handstand outside, um, have them tag your social media in it so that you can see it. Um, would be another option or hashtagging. Those are always great. Liz Hartman from Carbondale. Can you unmute your microphone? Would you like to talk about those digital transcription opportunities? Sure. Hi, can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, yes. Yeah, so the uh, Newberry Library, the Library of Congress, and the Smithsonian Museum have some really neat uh, volunteering opportunities that anybody can do. They also have uh, training available so that you know what to do. Um, it includes uh, transcribing handwritten documents, etc., or doing any sort of description or caption for photographs. And what's really neat is that because of the breadth of their collections, there are a lot of different subject areas that um, different people, you know, different people are interested in different things. So even though that might not be something that is specific to your library, that's still something that's library specific that uh, people could do and could earn prizes for, etc. Um, I can put those links in the comment here in a second too. So just thought people might be interested in that. I love that. And with the whole history theme, uh, that made me like another point that came to my mind is um, I know the state and just in general people it's so important to get that history right now um, so just encouraging them to do oral history projects while you're off if you are home with your family do an oral oral history project with them go through historical photos with your families and see what's related to your local area um, and then just having the kids themselves write down what is, you know, their perspective of what is happening right that right now, same with their families. And then another um, idea with that is I saw kids are becoming pen pals with people that are in assisted living um, situations and nursing homes because everybody needs somebody, right? So we all need that connection. So um, 
bringing back the whole pen pal idea um, is another idea for that. And it goes with the uh, dig deeper theme as well. Yeah, there you go. Kite or Diane Foote, is there anything you'd like to say from, from the ILA perspective? I just want to reiterate that I am so totally blown out of the water by what Ashley and Lindsay have been able to do there, Ellen, as you said, on the turn of a dime in this past week. The time is telescoping in really weird ways, so like not remembering when the meeting was, and I totally feel that every day. <laughs> Um, and I can't imagine um, how difficult it is for everyone plan trying to plan a summer reading program in this era of uncertainty, uh, because as librarians, we do like to plan ahead. We do like to have everything, um, all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed, and this is very unsettling for everyone. Um, I can't imagine that I would have anything else to add um, above and beyond what um, has been shared here today in terms of the really hands-on practical ideas for ways to deliver these kinds of activities, um, either remotely, um, in the analog world or remotely in the digital world. I think it's really important to keep um, kind of both audiences in mind. So if anyone has a particular uh, questions that are related to um, I read, I'm happy to take them. Um, I did put some information in the chat um, about the, the sketch, for, and I have no idea if this isn't a, I, I'm not trying to sell, I read it all in this conference, but just if anybody um, had placed an order, there, um, anything placed before January 7th has been shipped out, everything else is on hold as our warehouse is closed. Um, but uh, we do hope that, uh, you know, fingers crossed, after April 30th, we'll be able to open up again. So, um, I, I can't imagine I have anything else to add. Just thank you so much, Ellen and, and Heartland staff for hosting this. Thank you, Ashley and Lindsay, for um, being such fabulous advocates for summer reading. And thank you, everybody, for uh, chiming in today and, and, and being concerned about this, because I think um, it is a real opportunity for libraries to show our worth. Our physical buildings may be closed, but we are not closed. Mm -hmm. uh, we are continuing to serve our patrons, and I think that's a really important message in our communities as moving forward. Thanks, Diane. We also had a question about somebody um, from someone asking how they were handling spot, how you were handling sponsors this year. Sponsors with prizes, yeah. Um, I guess it depends on how many prizes you do. So we do ours as like a raffle system, and I only purchase three per age group, and they have to. We do it all virtual through Beanstack, um, except pre-K. Everybody in pre-K gets a prize. Um, they also, if they finish, they get an invitation to the pool party, which I don't know if that'll happen either. Um, so. Uh, it's a hard thing. I think if you have big corporate places, you can still ask them for um, some sort of sponsorship. I think your local small businesses could be questionable because if they're struggling financially, I mean, I personally have a really hard time asking them to give more back to their community when they're already struggling. So that's just my personal take on that one. Mm -hmm. Coupons might not be a idea, bad idea though, like McDonald's or um, see if like uh, Walmart can do a gift card um like your fast food places might still be able to do something because they're more corporate anybody else on the chat ha or have any ideas about sponsors anything anybody's doing in their communities that they'd like to share with the group because this is wonderful information to share collectively Ellen, this is Susan again. I didn't know if I could pop in on a couple of things. Sure. Um, one, my board president, who is a business owner here in my community, and I had decided I'm holding off sending out sponsor letters. I usually get $1,500 to $2,000 from the various businesses in my area, including Ameren, and I'm not even asking right now, not knowing whether, um, I know my businesses are gonna be hurting already, uh, but not knowing how long this is gonna go, I'm waiting to see before I even try to do sponsor letters. Two, I've been doing, reading a story every day on Facebook live on, and posting it to the library's Facebook page and that's generating a lot of interest. But we've been talking about trying to do our crafts as a baggie that people could pick up. We've done outside scavenger hunts in the community for four years now, this would have been our fifth year doing it. And I'm still trying to think of a way I can do it that would be safe even if we're under the COVID you know, keeping things clean because we were actually going to use a letterboxing type scavenger hunt this summer in the community. So now I'm just kind of wondering whether we can do that and it'd be safe for people to handle those kind of things. So it would be interesting if anybody else has done scavenger hunts like that before. 
I see Liz, thanks Susan. I really like Liz Hartman's idea about doing wiki edits for local <laughs> um, resources over the summer. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. What what a historian and archivist we have in our pocket there. And Catherine, I like your idea too about thanking local businesses. I think this is certainly a time for all of us to, to focus locally and help where we can in our own communities because you know, every, everybody has felt this impact and the more we can do, the better. Um, so, we actually, on our Beanstack one, have a, a support local badge um, that people can earn this summer um, by, because even with pickup, we have a lot of local places doing pickup for food, um, being able to do something like that um, so we can give back to our community as well. And with my advocacy cap on for a second, um, I know Senator Rich Rochelle Crow, she'll do like a summer reading program herself. And so if you know that there's local legislators that are doing their own reading initiatives, just see if there's a way that you can incorporate that with your program. And then additionally, um, the summer is the centennial of the 19th Amendment. So um, girl power. So I know um, female legislators are getting ready to do a story time for that as well. So um, if you, if that's something else that you can also put into the summer reading program is having something like that with, there's so many books now. So maybe oh, we could have a list um, of that. Trooper Tracy, if anybody follows Trooper Tracy on Facebook, she's with the Illinois State Police and she is hilarious. Um, she's been doing daily videos of um, state troopers reading books and it's called hashtag books and badges. Um, so, and I think Granite City's also been showing, um, videos of their officers reading, but the books and badges are super cute. Um, so that's another option. Um, if you're, cause I know celebrities are a big one, authors are reading stories, mm -hmm. but, um, officers are, are always good. I saw someone mention having first responders and healthcare workers reading stories. So I love that mm -hmm. idea. Yes. Um, the, the comments we have about scavenger hunts are worth noting. Somebody said, it, you don't have to touch the item, it can be a picture. And mm -hmm. some said they can be items out in nature. So both good options for people who are trying to still maintain any kind of social distance. You could do a drive-by too. Like stay in your car, things that are maybe larger that they can just drive by and take a picture. So it's kind of the best of all worlds and you're not getting close to anybody. Um, did you ladies see the uh, question about how to spell Tracy? Oh. Yes, Trooper Tracy, thank you, Carla. Uh, and follow state the state police's Facebook. They're hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> We're big PD supporters uh, at my house, so <laughs> I follow all that stuff. Anything, anybody? Again, any? I'm I'm dying to hear what people are thinking about moving forward. Anything that we haven't covered or story walks? Jerseyville is a great library to look at as far as what they've achieved with their story walks. Jen Abler, do you want to unmute and talk about the soup? I didn't expect you to say unmute. I was just typing. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to hear your voices. Hi, Ellen. It's nice to see, see quote unquote, see you. Um, I was just saying, uh, I know it's very difficult to keep in touch with my staff, and I have all of their phone numbers. Uh, so we in the ILA Youth Services Forum. Have Speak louder, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. At the ILA Youth Services Forum, probably, I think we're three years old now, the soup. Uh, we have a Facebook group. It's called The Soup. It's moderated by the forum members, and the board uh, will make sure that the folks that join are only youth services staff in Illinois. Uh, no vendors or people trying to sell things, but it's an awesome avenue to share ideas, thoughts, frustrations, jobs. Um, I know one of the things that I always think back on is that I needed new chairs for our program room. And so I put it out there and I got great ideas. Um, I've seen people post on their ideas about what to do for summer reading, virtual programs. Hey, I've had this great performer. Maybe I should, you know, hook up with him or her. Um, do you want to share this performer? It's just, it's all youth services. It's all Illinois. It's 
just us trying to get through our daily life. And especially now that our daily life is so unknown, uh, it's another great place to share ideas. That's probably about it. Great, <laughs> and that's you. great for this group moving forward. Yes, it's been, like I said, it's been, um, I believe it had its three year anniversary a month or two ago. I, after being in captivity now for like 902 days, I cannot even remember what day it is. So um, I think it was a couple months ago, we were three years old and we've had so many different shares and ideas and posts. I just know, I, I always think, obviously I'm biased, but I'm always like, I'll just take that to the soup. The soup will know what to do. So um, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. And then also if you're interested, if I can do a little self-promotion, uh, if you're interested in joining the board, we're always looking for new members and we can meet virtually with you. So that's it, Alan. Right. That's a great resource for us all moving forward. And Diane posted um, the link to the soup within the chat, so we're good there. And Catherine, Catherine responded, and I've heard lots of people say this, they won't have toys in the library this summer. And that, and Joelle responded in agreement. And that's something I think a lot of libraries are, are faced with. It's kind of a sad commentary. Anything else? Okay, there was, a, there was a question about what social media platforms are working best for people and someone else talked about Facebook. Is anybody using anything else that's particularly effective for them? I think it depends on who it is you're, you're reaching, um, which somebody did mention that like teens are more on Insta, um, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I don't know what Discord is. It shows how old I am, I guess. Um, <laughs> I look like I'm 12, but I'm not. Um, so, but like for me, I, I think a lot of what, who we're trying to reach is um, a lot of moms. I'll be honest. A lot of moms, a lot of stay at home moms, a lot of times. So Facebook has been our, our main Avenue. Um, my program coordinator, Holly, Holly is way better at Instagram than I am. So she usually does that for me. Um, but I think it depends on if you're trying to directly reach them, which platform you're using. I know I heard too, that Twitter is growing. Um, Twitter, you have to be really present for, so I, I avoid it. It scares me. And it also helps to see what the schools are using. So I know in the Collinsville School District, they use Facebook. Every school has a Facebook page and um, any like district messages go out on Facebook. So parents are already in that routine to check Facebook. So that's why we use Facebook the most for, for that. Um, I also, I, I think I've mentioned this, I'm, I have a really good relationship with our school districts in town. And so I actually email the secretaries um, and then they forward out um, emails to either parents or like at the high school, they'll email directly to all of the students because they've got email addresses through the school. Um, so when we did like a big study night back in the, um, December, I was hoping for another one in May, but that won't happen. Um, so I sent it to them and then they shoot it out to everybody. Uh, so that that's another avenue that I'm gonna use for marketing social media or um, summer reading is I'm gonna ask the, the schools to forward it on to parents um, and teens so that they can, they get it directly. It's something they're already checking, um, so. Yes, Facebook events are really good. Um, you can, if you mark interested, then your friends are gonna see that you're interested and then it kind of grows. Um, that's why you get such a, it, it reaches a lot more people. Um, also, don't be afraid to spend the money on the sponsored um, advertisements. Um, it's not much, but it, you can choose um, demographics and, um, you know, distance on who's going to see that, which is always, um, you know, it's helpful to be able to target. Like if you're doing something like um, car basics for women, well, you can opt to only have it go towards the women. So that's, since that's who you're, you're aiming for. Um, so those are great things too. Don't be afraid to pay a little for that marketing on your social media sites. 
Yes. <laughs> um, Julia's asked me to ask the group, the wisdom of the group. Um, this was, this is, this is really a fun chat. Um, if, if we get, if a group gathered again to chat, um, are there other things you'd like to talk about? Or would you like to touch base during the summer, how folks are doing? And I think putting things in the chat will be a, the best way to handle that, your responses to that question. In these chats, Julie is always a very good, good um, monitor and make know what we're doing. Hi, Ashley. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay says marketing. Christina, what's Twitch? I don't know what Twitch is. Oh, Christina said gamers use Twitch on live stream. I like Facebook Live too, sorry, Squirrel, um, because it also, if people are following it, um, it pops up and says like, Wood River Library is live right now. So they get that notification. Um, and again, I like to shout out to my kids whenever I see people pop up. Um, I like to make sure that they know that I'm, I can see or I, that it's real time. I like to acknowledge them. Um, you can also on Facebook following the like thing, you can go under um, events and I think you can click follow or subscribe to events. Um, so that way, every time you add a new event, it notifies a person. Um, that's another one. Well, Amanda, you've, you've addressed the impact of, of streaming events on Facebook. You know, one thing I've thought about a lot and, you know, three years from now when people are reviewing how we handled all this and what we learned from all this, I mean, places like school districts and, and, and libraries will have communication down as far as how to reach out to people. And, and I think there was something else I was going to say and I can't, the whole, the whole, I know what it was, the whole thing about people becoming more comfortable with technology because for so long people said, well, I don't want to do that. Or, and now we have to do it. Now to stay connected to anybody, we have to do it. So I think, you know, there will be silver linings for us and that's good. Okay, Kathleen has a very good question and I know the group can help with that. Any tips on taking videos to post on Facebook? Like, what, what do you do for sound and pictures? I use my iPhone for everything, except currently I'm on a laptop, but my iPhone is what I use for Facebook Live. I set it up on a, like an easel, so I don't have to keep, well, because I'm doing, I'm dancing like a fool, so holding it isn't really an option. Um, someone also commented on people having unwanted comments. I'll be honest, I haven't had any unwanted comments during my Facebook Lives. Um, the weirdest thing was somebody gave me an angry reaction to dancing to kids music, but I don't know. Maybe he just didn't like Baby Shark. One thing you do have to remember, if your comments are turned on, mm. you, you can't delete any comments. And that, that's, a, that's a public access kind of rule. Right is public bodies so now Ellen can you delete them if they have foul language or incite I believe like if they're yeah okay right right the exam the example we used is one year after members matter we had somebody make a negative comment about one of the programs. and these were people who had volunteered for us so we didn't it was hurtful to see that there but we couldn't take it down because it was it was public we have something similar with, I'm, I don't know who's seen the YouTube video of the Wood River Walmart and our police officer, um, but somebody found a picture on our Instagram of an officer doing a story time and somebody had to post just nasty things, but nothing 
that's really worth deleting. And so it's that same thing. When I had a board member tell me just to delete it, I said, I can't like until yeah. it's foul language or it's starting to incite violence or whatever, then it's, it's her opinion. Liz, thank you for posting that link. That will be very helpful. And again, we're going to try and capture all of these um, so people can have access to this. Anything else for the order? Um, please remember that Dina posted, Dina Porter from um, the SHARE team posted early on that if you're a member of Illinois Heartland Library System and your library is a member of SHARE, she can pull for you email addresses for your patrons. So if that will be a help, I'm sure Dina will be happy to do that. Okay, Barb has a question about performers and what they charge. The only thing I know about is um, Animal Tales so that they would not be charging the same amount um, as if they were in person. I don't know what the, what the lower amount will be. So I think that's a conversation you have to have with each person. Um, I personally don't feel like I should spend $350 for you to do it in your living room versus at my facility. So I think you have to talk to each performer and see what their thoughts are. Right, since this is a lot of their livelihoods, I'm sure they're willing to um, contact the, the hist our regular historical portrayers, um, Kevin Wood, who does a wonderful Abe Lincoln, and uh, Terry Lynch, that does numerous historical portrayers, and they're doing it virtually for $150, which is a very good rate. Thanks, Sylvia. Yeah. else. Again, Crystal posted something about um, crafts for people. And yes, Alice, I think people are altering their dates in the amount of weeks. We, Woodruff are starting, um, we're starting, we're starting two weeks earlier and running for this. So we're actually going for like closer to eight weeks rather than like five. Um, just because people are going to need something to do and everything's online so they can kind of do things at their own pace. Which means we also changed our summer reading goals because um, they're going to have more time to complete them. How do you work your badges for in, like if you were doing, um, so I, we're using Beanstack, but I think that you can do a badge system however you want. So our badges are something like um, water. We're having like a water badge. And so to earn your water badge, you have to do one, two, three, however many activities you want, but they would do something like swimming, play in the sprinkler, wash a car, slip and slide, play with water balloons, whatever you want. So let's say I give them 10 ideas and they have to do two to earn their water badge. Um, and then you could do something um, like supporting local. So maybe they eat at a local restaurant, maybe they tag, they gave a review of a local restaurant um, and they can choose, how, you decide how many activities they have to do under one badge. So I try and make the badge more broad and then the activities within it more specific. Um, you can also have like links to different, you have like a craft one and they have to do a couple different crafts. Um, you can do it. We've always done a social media one to get people to follow us on social media. So those are options. Um, if you look in the chat, Catherine Bailey brought something up that Anna had brought up with me as far as contacting patrons and making sure we have permission to contact them. So mm -hmm. if you contact Dina, we will run that by um, Troy and Cassie and just make it very clear what people are able to share and what we're not able to share and how we, how we best contact our patrons. 
I think another point that I just thought about, like you squirrel, um, <laughs> is, yeah, <laughs> is um, we went to an e-card platform. So if your library does not already allow patrons to get an e-card, it's basically just having your application online. So that way, if they don't already have a library card, you can still be promoting all of the e-resources that your library has invested in and incorporate those with your summer reading program. And they still don't have to physically come into the library to get a card. So I meant to put that in the slides, but just um, definitely something to consider and talk about with your board if you haven't already is starting that e-card e process. So we just did that. Um, we launched our, like we call them temporary cards um, and they're only good for a month. Um, right now I'm not hugely worried about, um, ab about it because they can't physically check out an item. They're just using our online resources, which mm -hmm. please do. Um, but with residency, so one of the questions, are, we use Google Forms, um, super easy. And so the very first question is, do you live in Wood River? And if they answer no, um, then it says, okay, you need to contact the library that you pay taxes to. I mean, it uses more simplified language, but basically telling them, sorry, you can't have one. Then it's, if you live in Wood River, it says, do you rent or do you own? And if they own, then they type in all their information. It goes to my assistant director. She checks the tax records to see that they're paying taxes to us. Um, and then she issues them a card, a number virtually that way. If they say they rent, then we ask for the landlord's name. And I took this for, I think it's Jerseyville. So if Anita's on here, thank you for that. Um, and if it, the landlord's name matches the property tax record, then we continue on. If not, we've called, um, we can call City Hall and ask for, we have occupancy permits here, so I can get an occupancy check or ask if um, they're on the water bill um, to prove residency. Um, so far, they've all been homeowners, um, and I think that my assistant director issued three yesterday. We've done like six in a week, which is pretty big for us. I was kind of surprised we had that much, but I agree. You want to get them using those digital resources. Um, oh, and Amanda, how many badges? Uh, right now, I think I have, I don't know, I was just working out 12, but I know we're going to have more than that. Um, and that's not including the reading badges. Um, for my pre-K kids, for every 10 books they read, they get a badge. Um, other ones, it's for every like book they read. It just depends on the age. So it's as many badges as you want. The world is your oyster. And definitely um, work with your local scout groups, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, just your local scouts, because um, my coworker ran into like the area leader and they were thrilled. So if there's a way that you can like mirror what the what badges the scouts have to earn with different things that you can do in your summer reading program they said they would be thrilled and then cross promotion and everything like that so I love that scouts. and we have a recommendation from belinda for a performer named miss jamie on the farm looks like she has a facebook page she did a virtual program um that's great the, the more resources like that we can share, the better for all of us. Another uh, thing that popped in my mind is uh, Comfort Dogs are doing virtual read to a dog programs. So if you reach out to any Comfort Dog organizations or um, I guess PTSD dogs too, but um, any service dogs are doing like virtual read to a dog programs too. How does that work? They just face like just show the dog and they just read the, the screen. screen. Yeah. So it's yours because we have um, we have a comfort or a, yeah comfort dog. Is is Esther doing it? I haven't asked her yet, but I'm sure she'd be willing to. I say I'll have to send a message to Zillow. It was cute, like the news article that I saw, it was like a kid like trying to pet the screen because the dog was on the Aww. other side. <laughs> and shout out to Mississippi Valley too, I see Katie. I love their different story times because they like take them places. So one time Katie was with a chinchilla and she did a chinchilla story time. Yes. And another time they were um, like, it looked like an outdoor patio, but you're, you guys are always going somewhere different. So I love that. <laughs> changing up the background a little bit <laughs> <laughs> well I think I think I think the biggest shout out is how how willing people are to share I mean we are we are very fortunate in this profession that that's how that's how we operate
Okay, we're, we're at 2.25. Um, and I think we can start to wind this down. Again, Ashley and Lindsay, I, we can't thank you enough. Um, you made a real difference. Um, you've made a real contribution in this most challenging time. And we are so grateful to you. We're also grateful to Diane and Kate for being with us. <laughs> LA and, and for all of you who participated, um, what a great way to spend the afternoon and we'll, we'll surely follow up with you at the beginning of the week next week and make sure you have the resources you need, um, but, but from all of us and, and to John and Julia and Dina and Anna, um, thanks for backing me up on the system side. It makes a big difference. I need to be reined in sometimes. Thanks to all of you and Everybody have a lovely weekend. Um, be sure to get out and enjoy the sun where it is. And I'm sure we'll talk soon. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yeah, big virtual. Turn your cameras on and say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>